coming up in all angles, a state of public emergency, St. James, St. Catherine North, sections of Kingston, St. James again, but Hanover and Westmoreland too. And now St. Andrews South, is this the only way to go? Or are the security forces and government out of ideas? I'm Dion Jacksonville and joining us in studio we have Chief of Defense Staff Lieutenant General Rocky Mead. We also have the Commission of Police Major General Anthony Anderson. Gentlemen, thank you both so much for coming in. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Now thank I've you. asked this question a lot of times and it seems that I always get a different response. Do the imposition of states of emergency result in criminals fleeing that area and moving to other areas? You first, Mr. Commissioner. Well, um, Dion, some of them may leave the area. Uh, the state of emergency does separate uh, the people who want to do people harm from those people who they want to do harm. And so some of them will flee the area. Some of them, as you know, we may detain. Some of them, there are orders that prevents people from going in a particular space. So there are a number of things that will happen, but some people do displace, yes. You agree, sir? I agree. Um, you have to remember that we're trying to protect citizens without uh, totally restricting the um, ability of citizens to move. So unless we have, say, warrants for particular individuals that we go and detain, everyone else is free. Uh, to move about. Uh, we ensure that persons are not moving with weapons, um, but there, um, there are opportunities for persons to move in and out of the space, yes. And let me follow up on that then with a couple of um, your colleagues, because in May, Superintendent Kirk Ricketts of Trelawney mm -hmm. told our news centre that the states of emergency in the Western Jamaica were causing criminals to move into Trelawney. And in terms of numbers, in terms of murders there, we saw 12 to 15 from last year to this year, 6 to 9 in terms of shooting. Similarly, in St. Catherine South, SSP Clive Blair said they were seeing migrating criminals coming from areas like St. Catherine North and St. James, and also in Trelawney, Superintendent Bobbitt Morgan similarly said they were seeing criminals fleeing from Western Jamaica. St. Mary, S right. Correct, right. correct, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Right, now, if, it, if this is happening though, if the criminals are migrating, doesn't that mean that this, this series of rolling states of emergency, which is essentially what we're seeing, is overall going to be ineffective? Uh, no, I don't agree with that. Uh, there are two things that define the type of violence that we see. One is that the persons who perpetrate violence know specifically who they wish to do that on because most of the violence is as a result of some previous act of violence. And so if you're in St. James, uh, usually the people you want to kill are there. And because you've moved to St. Mary to hide, doesn't mean you're necessarily going to kill people there. But the other thing that it does for us, it makes you them much more vulnerable because their support systems aren't in place where they usually displace to. And so we have uh, picked up a number of, of um, persons who are of interest who have left the areas where SOEs are to other places and we've captured them there. Now in St. Catherine South it's interesting that they say that they displaced from St. Catherine North. As you know we haven't had a state of emergency in St. Catherine North for a while but it is significantly uh, down over last year and that's because of other some other techniques that we're using there. Well, but following up on that, what you're saying though sounds at odds with the experience on your, of your colleagues, because they're saying we're seeing them coming here, they're creating problems here. Right. So, it's, so isn't that a, actually... So if you look at it, if you look at the numbers, uh, there are two areas basically that has caused a significant rise in our murder rate over the past two months. One is in St. Andrew South and the other one is in Clarendon. Those are, and then St. Catherine, sorry, St. Catherine South has, uh, in a more steady way this year, over last year, but Clarendon and St. Andrew South over the past two months have 
uh, created most of, of that problem. You're not seeing a lot of displacement. A lot of those are homegrown problems um, by persons who are gangs that are resident in St. Andrew South. Um, and then also in Clarendon, you're not seeing a lot of displacement uh, violence to Clarendon. A lot of the violence are persons that we are looking for are from Clarendon. Yeah. All right. I, I'm going to come back to that in mm -hmm. a moment. But you said, for instance, um, I, and you've just repeated it, mm -hmm. another state of emergency hasn't been needed in St. Catherine North mm -hmm. because, as you said, you've managed to keep down crimes with other stats. And we did see mm -hmm. the murders fall from 65 to 42. That's up to July 6th, I think. Mm -hmm. But St. Catherine South, which we were just speaking about, went from 49 to 67. Mm -hmm. So how does that not contradict what it is you say? Well, because that would mean that the St. Catherine South ones are actually from um, St. Catherine North as opposed to the inherent gangs in St. Catherine South actually starting to get more active. You, what usually spurs it, even if you have a, pa a period of calm, is that there is either some old vendetta that is played out, somebody returns from prison and wants to um, uh, reassert themselves, or um, you also find that some of them, it's really just um, an act of violence that has occurred and it just starts to have a series of reprisals. That's what you're saying. Isn't it true, though, let me ask you, General Meade, that really and truly you guys would love to see an island-wide state of emergency? You know, if we could tackle the problem by addressing all years at the same time, that would be good. Uh, but there are a number of reasons, not just resources. Resources would be one where we wouldn't do that. But again, we have to make sure we do don't create a, a greater sense um, uh, a, a sense of panic greater than we need to. And uh, um, even when we c look at the fact that, um, you know, we are a, a very big tourist destination, the message sent, uh, you know, with a long island-wide um, emergency may have effects that we don't necessarily want. As I said, resources are part of it. We have a strategy which is to identify the communities that are bringing the, the, the greatest violence. And if we sustain the emergency in the areas that are affected until we get the effect we want, then we will get the long-term results without necessarily looking at an island-wide uh, state of emergency, even if the resources was not a challenge. What is though, you mentioned tourists, but what about Jamaicans and the impact of normalizing soldiers on the streets, soldiers in our community? I'm glad you mentioned that mm -hmm. because we do want to get back to normal. And the challenge is that we don't seem to recognize what normal is. When we did the declaration on Sunday, some statistics were presented that show that we are three times the regional um, per capita murder rate. So 16 per 100,000 in the region, we are over 40. And the region is o almost three times the world average, which is 6 per 100,000. So we're far from normal. We do, want, we do want to get back to normal, where normal policing methods can um, manage the levels of crime we have. So we have to use emergency powers while we have an emergency, which we do, while aiming to get back to, to normal. The problem we have is when you prematurely suspend emergency measures, you're still in a state of emergency, and there's an expectation that normal policing methods should now be adequate. 